Comics presents The Neb, starring Gene Lockhart and Kathleen Lockhart as Rudy and Fanny Neb. <laughs> the Neb, straight from America's famous comic strip, with Junior, Obi Slider, and all the others you've laughed and adventured with for 22 years. Well, the autumn leaves are a riot of color. Pumpkins are ripe on the vine. Shocks of corn are stacked in the fields to dry. And there's something doing in the Neb house. Rudy, Fanny, and Junior are getting ready for Halloween. Oh, so round, so firm, so fully packed, so... Oh, Rudy, take your head out of that pumpkin. Do you want to scare Junior? <laughs> Pop doesn't scare me, Mom. He looks better that way. Junior. <laughs> there's nothing like a nice, big, round, yellow pumpkin, eh, Junior? Well, I like them better when they're flat and brown and have a crust around them. <laughs> well, there are plenty of pumpkin pies for our party tonight. I made six. Six? Why, when I was out in the kitchen, I only counted five. Well, that's funny. When Pop came out of the kitchen, I only counted four. <laughs> that reminds me. Uh, Junior, will you go out in the kitchen and get me a... Uh... Just a minute. You two leave those pies alone. I don't want any pie. I want some bicarb of soda. <laughs> A little exercise might help. Now, will you boys please give me some help with these Halloween decorations? And Rudy, stop walking under that ladder. Jeepers, Pop, don't you know walking under ladders is bad luck? I have better luck walking under them than up them. Every time I climb a ladder, I see spots before my eyes. What's the matter, Pop? Dizzy spells? No, Junior, dirty walls. (laughs) And your father's going to have to clean them. You see what I mean, Junior? I wonder what everybody's bringing to the party tonight. Why should they bring anything? What did Pop do, get him into thinking this was Christmas? Oh, I suppose it's a habit left over from the war, Junior. I planned a buffet, and everybody insisted on bringing a dish of some kind. And I'll bet your cousin Amby Potts will bring a bag of stale peanuts. Gee, Pop, you talk like cousin Amby's as stingy as old Scrooge. My boy, your cousin Amby Potts gave Scrooge lessons. Oh, now, Rudy, <laughs> don't be too hard on Amby. Yeah, I remember last Halloween when he came over, he brought an apple. That's right. Amby was feeling kind-hearted last year. He wanted to give the worm a ride. (laughs) Now you boys break it up. Junior, I want you to run over to the store for me. Here, here's a list of the things I want. Okay, Mom, but I gotta hurry. I got a date with Donna. Rudy, look, isn't that Amby wobbling up the walk? Oh, must be. Too tall for a duck. Come in. Hello, Fanny. Hello, Rudy. Well, Amby, it's awfully nice to see you. Yes, it's also nice when we don't. Same to you, Rudy. What's all the decorating for? We're having a party, Amby. Didn't you know it's Halloween? He probably thinks Halloween is the time you take a calf away from its mother. <laughs> oh, pipe down, Rudy. Halloween's for kids. All they do is run around ringing doorbells. No, Amby. Blackmailing people by yelling tricks or treats, pushing over... Amby. Fences. <laughs> Amby, you talk like you're soured on the world. Sour is right. Amby's the only lemon I ever saw that didn't grow on a tree. And you're the only monkey I ever saw who couldn't hang by his tail from one. <laughs> touché. Huh? What's touché? Well, it isn't a hand lotion. Everybody's coming over tonight, Amby. Obie Slider and her. And so? Maybe I'll be over. And they're all bringing something. Oh, maybe I'll stay home. <laughs> oh, you must come, Andy. You'll enjoy it. I should think you get awfully tired living alone in that house next door. Not half as tired as we get having you live next door. Now, Rudy. Oh, Fanny, I don't pay no attention to little big shot here. Why, if I took exception to what he says, I'd rough him up till he looked like my ex-wife made me look. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good old Sylvia Appleby. Now, there's a girl. You said it, and she can stay there. Now, you men stop talking about Sylvia. What's wrong with her, besides being a gossip? She talks too much. No wonder Amby didn't know what day this was. By when he was married to Sylvia, every day was Halloween at his house. Well, anyway, the witch was there. (laughs) Amby. Too bad you don't have a nice family. You'd be a different man. Well, maybe, Fanny. I reckon I do envy you and Rudy sometimes. I guess I'd take an interest in such things as Halloween if I had some children and a good wife cook for me. Why, Amby, wasn't Sylvia a good cook? 
The only thing she could cook good was my goose. <laughs> be right nice to be like you folks, having friends drop in for dinner and them bringing the dinner. Well, Andy, maybe you'll find the right girl yet. Girl? Any woman in his age group is no girl. No, be quiet, Rudy. My place sure needs a woman's touch, Fanny. House needs cleaning. Andy, I have an idea. Why not leave your key with me and I'll go over and tidy up things a bit. Would you, Fanny? You bet I will. Well, now, that's mighty nice of you. Here's the key. When you finish, just block up the place and have Junior drop the key off at my office. All right, Andy. Well, guess I'll be going. You'll be around for the party tonight, won't you, Andy? Sure, sure. See you later. As long as it don't cost nothing. <laughs> Goodbye, Andy. Rudy, I've got a wonderful idea. Yes? What? I feel sorry for poor Andy. Let's take all the food and decorations over to his house and surprise him with a real Halloween party over there. My, my, that, that is an idea. It even gives me an idea. Yes, what? I'll take a jack-o'-lantern, fill it full of water, put it up over his door, and when he comes in, it'll spill all over him. Oh, Rudy, Neb, you'll do no such thing. Boy, I can see the headlines in tomorrow's paper. Amby Potts gets Duncan in pumpkin. <laughs> Rudy. <laughs> Amby Potts. Washed by a squash. <laughs> we'll return to the Nebs in just a moment. But first, here's a suggestion. If you're a wife or a mother, take a good look at your menfolk. Do you notice signs of nervousness, circles under the eyes, worry, and overwork? Do they complain of sleep being interrupted, nervousness, or rheumatic pains? Ask yourself, does my husband look years older than he actually is? These symptoms may be caused by excess acids and poisons which should be removed through the bloodstream. When there is nothing organically or systemically wrong, the medicine called Systex. C-Y-S-T-E-X usually goes to work right now, helping nature clear away excess acids and poisons. So if you're run down and not up to par, why don't you try Systex? You must discover Systex to be a quick and easy way to help remove excess acids through the blood and to gain increased vitality and better sleep, or your money back is guaranteed on return of empty package. Get Systex, C-Y-S-T-E-X, from your druggist today, and take it as directed with a glass of water after each meal. See how much better you feel tomorrow. <laughs> to the Nebs. Fanny, you could have thought of something a lot easier than holding our Halloween party over at Amby's house. You just get started over to Amby's with those decorations. Here, Mom, I got the things you wanted at the store. Oh, thank you, Junior. Uh, uh, Junior, uh, give me a hand with these pumpkins. We're moving everything over to Amby's house. But, Pop, I've got a date. Buck's coming by for me in a minute. Fine. He can help, too. But jeepers, Pop, we got to pick up Donna and drive out in the country for a load of pumpkins. Donna wants them for the Girl Scouts' Halloween party. Now, Junior, Girl Scouts are for girls. Oh, yeah? Get hep, Pop. Get hep. <laughs> I think it's real nice of Junior to help them with their party. After all, this is National Girl Scout Week. And I'm scouting for them all week, too. Come in. Hi, Buck. Hello, Buck. Good morning, everybody. Oh, aren't you a little mixed up, Buck? This is afternoon. Oh, but I haven't had any lunch. Why, Buck, you must be starved. Can I get your sandwich? Oh, thanks, Mrs. Neb. I'd like to have just some plain rye bread. Is that all, Buck? Well, if you insist, I'll have a little something between us. How about a sandwich with rye bread, cheese, and mayonnaise? Uh, no mayonnaise, thank you. Instead, I'll have mustard, pickles, sliced tomato, lettuce, and cheese melted on a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> well, excuse me, Buck. I'll see what I can do. Your mother is very hospitable, Junior. And so is your appetite. It welcomes anything. <laughs> well, Buck, I like to see growing boys eat. Oh, it isn't that I'm so hungry, Mr. Neb. I just don't want to catch anemia. Why, you don't look like there's been anything ever wrong with you. Well, I had a light touch of hangnails last week, but I'm getting over it now. <laughs> Say, Buck, we better get going. Donna's probably at home sitting on pins and needles. Well, if she is, she'll get up. <laughs> Now, while you boys are waiting, how about helping me take some of this Halloween equipment over to Amby Potts? Oh, Pop. Here's your sandwich, Buck. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Neb. Junior, do you want to help me carry it? 
You know how to carry that sandwich, I'd need a bucket. Now, you boys be careful and drive slowly. Oh, we'll have to in my jalopy. Oh, Buck, it's too bad you don't have a girl to take along. Well, I wanted Buck to let me get him a blind date. Oh, no, thanks. I got stuck with a blind date once. I had a terrible time. Ugh. Where did you take her, Buck? No place. She just sat at home in her playpen and chewed on a rattle. <laughs> Well, Donna, I hope we got enough pumpkins for your girl scout party. Oh, these will be slow, Buck. Practically a whole jalopy full. Jeepers, there's hardly any room to sit in here. Say, I got an idea, Donna. What is it, Junior? Well, instead of me holding so many pumpkins, how about you holding the pumpkins and let me hold you? Why, Junior Neff, I'll do no such thing. Well, who do you think you are? Van Johnson? If you was, Donna, you'd be holding him. Hey, <laughs> hey gang, look. It's beginning to rain. I thought I felt some mist on my face. Oh, it isn't raining. It's just the radiator steaming up. <laughs> oh, but radiators don't have cloud bursts. It's rain. Well, if you don't believe it's the radiator, look at Donna's face. It's beginning to rust. <laughs> you should talk, Buck. You look like you've been hit in the face by a big, juicy freckle. Well, once we get up this grave, we'll soon be home and we can get cleaned up. Golly, we aren't out of sight of the pumpkin field yet. It's just back down the hill. Oh, now what? Buck, I think you've got carburetor trouble or something. Is that just another way of saying we're out of gas? Oh, we couldn't be, unless that leak's come back in the tank. Junior Neb, after all the times we've been out together, are you trying to pull that low weeds about being out of gas? Well, it's not me that's out of gas, Donna. It's Buck Jalopy. And even I'm more romantic than to deliberately run out of gas with a car full of pumpkins. <laughs> well, Buck, it's awfully silly not to check everything before you start out on a trip like this. Well, I did check everything. I stopped that gas leak only yesterday. Huh. After this, I'll believe the radio. This wartime chewing gum is inferior. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Mrs. Nib. This is Buck. I called to tell you Junior may be a little late. What's the matter, Buck? Well, we were coming home when the jalopy stalled. And when we got out to see what the trouble was, it rolled back down the hill. But, Buck, where are the pumpkins? They're back in the field. Well, what about your car? It's in there with the rest of the pumpkins. Come in. Hello, Fanny. Well, it's Obie Slider. Hi there, Buglebeak. Hello, Adam Brain. <laughs> Say, I thought you folks were going to have a Halloween party. We are. Why do you think I'm carrying a pumpkin under my arm? Oh, is that a pumpkin? I thought it was your head. We're having a party, all right, Obi. Now, from the looks of this living room, you've already had it. Well, you see, Obi, Fanny had a bright idea. Well, naturally. She's the only one around this house who could have a bright idea. Obi, we decided to surprise Andy Potts and have the party at his house. He came by today, and I felt sorry for him. Andy's terribly lonely. Well, did you ever see a skunk that wasn't? <laughs> We had our house half-decorated, and now we're moving the party over there. Well, the only way Andy'd ever have a party is to have somebody take it to him. Uh, what have you got in that paper, Sack? <laughs> well, here, Fanny. Uh, now, this is mine and Hepsi's contribution to the buffet supper. That's awfully nice of you, Obie. There's some homemade donuts, a pie, and two fried chickens. Plus a couple of drumsticks that disappeared on the way over. I'll take these things over to Andy with the rest of the food. Uh, here, Obi, you can help me take some stuff over. I'm going to put you to work. Oh, I knew I should have sent Hepsi this trip. What's the matter with Junior? He'd come in mighty handy here. Junior and Donna went with Buck to get some pumpkins for the Girl Scout Halloween party. This is National Girl Scout Week, you know. <laughs> well, boys will be Girl Scouts. I remember when I was a Girl Scout. Oh, Rudy, stop bragging. Uh, you know what I mean, Fanny. Uh, when I was a Boy Scout. I learned plenty. I did my good deed every day. I learned courtesy, kindliness, courage. Rudy, you surprise me. 
I also learned to be stingy, uh, uh, thrifty. <laughs> Of course you're going to tell us you were an eagle. Of course you're going to tell us you were an eagle. Of course you're going to... Two. Yep, to the Elks gave me a two. Yep, to the Elks gave me a two. <laughs> the Nebs will take their party to Ambie's house in just a moment. But first, ask your doctor, and he's likely to tell you that a high percentage of people don't drink enough water. So, here's a health tip. Drink a glass of cool, pure water after every meal. At the same time, take two tasteless, sugar-coated little tablets of Cystex. The Cystex, you see, goes right along with the water and helps nature clear away excess acids, which, if too concentrated and if allowed to accumulate, may cause rheumatic pains, loss of energy, make you nervous, and what is of prime importance, may interrupt your sleep. So if you feel tired, run down, and old before your time, why don't you try taking Cystex? C-Y-S-T-E-X with a full glass of water after each meal. When there is no organic or systemic cause, Cystex usually goes to work right now, helping nature eliminate excess acids and poisons through the bloodstream. And this aid to nature in filtering and cleansing the blood may bring more restful sleep, an almost unbelievable increase in aliveness and vitality, a new spring to your step, a sparkle your eyes. Actually make you look and feel years younger. This much is certain. Cystex must satisfy you in every way, do far more for you than you expect, or you simply return the empty package and your money back is guaranteed. So get money back guaranteed Cystex. C-Y-S-T-E-X from your druggist today. Take it with a glass of water after each meal. See how quickly it puts you on the road to feeling like new again. And now, back to the Nebs with Gene Lockhart and Kathleen Lockhart as Rudy and Fanny Neb. Oh, Fanny, I always said I'd do anything for you, but when I said it, I, I didn't know it'd include coming over here to Ambie's house and decorating it for Halloween. Oh, now you and Obie just go ahead and fix up the place. Uh, Fanny, uh, how'd you ever persuade Amby to let you have the keys to his house without telling him about the party? Well, he said the place was in a mess, so I offered to clean house for him. Well, it'd have been much easier just to hire a couple of street cleaners. <laughs> oh, I'm going home now and bring back some dishes and things. Now, you boys go ahead with the decorating. All right, Fanny. Obi, isn't it strange how a man living by himself will let things go? Just look at this dump. Well, you know, poor Amby never was used to much in the first place. He used to tell me about his life as a boy. His folks lived in a shack upstairs over the pig pen. And that must have been very unsanitary. Oh, I don't know. Amby said they didn't lose a pig in ten years. <laughs> well, come on. Let's get things fixed. Fanny will be back in a minute. Wait a minute, Rudy. Did you see this stack of mail that old Amby left here on the table? Letters to him? Well, he had. Well, what do you know? Amby belongs to a Lonely Hearts Club. Well. Oh, let me see. Mm. Well, it doesn't sound like you will be lonely very long, Obi. Uh, listen to this. Mm -hmm. My dear buttered coffee cake. <laughs> Sounds like Amby's being buttered for coffee and cake. Be quiet, listen. Mm -hmm. Won't you please send me your picture? In my imagination, I always think of you as strong, silent, calm, and composed. Well, Amby's always been calm and decomposed. She says, your disposition is tranquil. Your face is benign. Benign is right. He'll soon be 99. And listen to this. Honey boy, I don't picture you with a mustache. Well, that's all right. His nose hides it. Uh, how did she sign the letter? Uh, your devoted cream puff with the cream on top. <laughs> hey, here's your picture. Must have dropped out of the letter. Take a look at this. Uh-oh. I see. Well, it could happen to anybody. But it shouldn't. Rudy, what are you and Obi doing? Oh, uh, just taking a little recess. Why, you haven't done a thing. Yes, we have, Fanny. We discovered that Honey Boy Pots and Cream Puff somebody or other are booming. Oh, brother. 
Why, the very idea. Were you two reading Ambie's mail? Uh, but, but, Fanny, the, the letter was lying wide open right here on the table. Well, put it back on the table. We've got to get things ready and go out, be out of here before Ambie gets home. But, Fanny, you should read some of the mushy goo in this letter. Rudy, I've heard enough mushy goo to last me a lifetime. Where? The night you proposed. Huh? <laughs> With another Halloween, just like this, remember? <laughs> you had your speech all written out. Aha! Uh-huh. Had a ghostwriter, huh? <laughs> I'll never forget that night. It was moonlight, and Rudy and I were down to the lake. And when I got home, I told my father that at last I'd hooked Rudy on the pier. <laughs> your father always liked me, Fanny. Uh, what did he say? He said I should have thrown you back. <laughs> well, at last, everything's done. Ambie will certainly be in for a surprise when he gets home. Yeah, I locked up that moth infested shack of his. Uh, here's the key. Junior, I promised Ambie I'd send uh, him the key. Uh, will you run down to the bank and give it to him? Oh, sure, Mom, right away. Come in. Well, well, howdy, howdy, folks, howdy. Well, hello, Herbie. Sit down, Herb. Make yourself at home. Yeah, don't mind if I do, Fanny. Don't mind if I do. Uh, yes, I'll take off my shoes. Nope, better not. My socks are in the wash. <laughs> <laughs> well, Herb, all set for the party tonight? Party? What party? Oh, oh party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Supposed to be with a party tonight. Call it off, though. <laughs> Had another day. <laughs> <laughs> Rudy means our Halloween party, Herb. Oh, Halloween party. Oh, sure, sure. You get the fiddles I sent you over? Yes, it was a very nice box lunch. Yes, yes, I thought so myself. Uh, <laughs> picked it up at the barber shop. Don't know who left it. Think it was a war worker. <laughs> <laughs> he won't eat it the whole war's over. <laughs> Well, Herb, we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. Playing games, bobbing for apples. Yeah, that's so, that's so. Well, I ain't never bobbed no apples. <laughs> been, been years since I bobbed anything but hair. <laughs> Would work on an apple, though. Oh, that's a different bob, Herb. <laughs> There's a one, all right. Ain't the one I know. Nice feller, Bob. <laughs> nice feller, Bob. That's Bob Teller Fixer says, leave the Yankees, you know. <laughs> now, why don't we talk about something we can all get together on? Why now, say something now and get together tonight. Yes, yes sir. Been talking about something all day in the barber shop, though. My the bridge is falling down over right here. <laughs> yeah. Big yeah. crowd in the shop today, I guess, huh? Oh, yeah. what, did, what did you fellas talk about? Oh, well, we never did find out. Nobody there but me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Herb, when there's nobody around to talk to, you can always talk to yourself. Uh, talking to himself might make people start asking questions, especially in Herb's case. Yeah, yeah, already done that. Always ask myself a lot of silly questions. <laughs> Funny thing, always get silly answers. <laughs> Herb, what you need is a good home and a good wife to look after you. Some girl who'd be a real companion. Yes, just try and find such a character. Oh, might be done yet, Rudy. <laughs> Thought I had just such a girl once. Yep. Bumped into her down at the department store. <laughs> Took her home that night. Yep, big disappointment, though, big disappointment. Mm, wasn't she the right type? Oh, gosh, no. Missed it by a mile. Oh, yeah. Turned out to be a dress store dummy. She didn't wear shades at all. She didn't By the way, Herb, I found out Ambie Potts is corresponding with a prospective bride. Prospective bride, you say? <laughs> Never thought he'd take them prospecting. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like the real thing. They're writing love letters. Yeah, trouble with that is, next step after writing love letters is writing checks. Yep. I used to get love letters to sell. Nothing ever came of it, though. Why, Herb, I didn't know you were romantic. <laughs> oh, hey, oh, sure. <laughs> World's worst. This girl I wrote to was in poor health. They all spent the time with sanitarium. Used to write me mighty pretty love letters. A sanitarium, mm-hmm. huh? Uh, who was she, Herb? Oh, I never did learn her last name, Rudy. Always sort of signed her name letter, you know, just plain Josephine. That's a nice name, Josephine. Yeah, 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 yeah. She had a nice name for me, too. 
Always call me Napoleon. <laughs> well, we didn't like the Halloween party, boy. Now, quiet, everybody. Let's sneak up to Ambie's door and burst in. I bet the old cooch getting a kick out of this Halloween. Oh, his light's on. I lighted the candles in those jack-o'-lanterns before I locked up the place this afternoon. Oh. Well, mental laps, open the door easy like. Okay. Well, it's locked. Guess he's afraid somebody will come up and yell, trick or treat. He calls that blackmail. And he's probably back in the kitchen sampling our buffet supper. Shouldn't do that, though. Ain't some time we all get that. You don't suppose he's mad because we decorated his house for the party, do you? I'll get his attention. Bambi Potts, open up this door. He can't hoard our food like this. We brought enough grub over here to last him all winter. Well, maybe that's why he won't let us in. He's going to hibernate. Hey, Pop. Yes, Junior? Well, I gave Cousin Ambie the key, and he said he'd be here later. Here's a note of thanks for cleaning up his house. Oh? What does what is Ambie say, Rudy? Uh, it says, Dear Fanny and Rudy, Happy Halloween. Keep an eye on my place until I get there. I'll be out of town for the weekend. I'm looking for a cream puff with the cream on top. <laughs> We'll be back in just a moment. Men and women past 35 often are surprised to find they're slowing down, feeling tired out, nervous, and old before they are tired. Most of these people do not realize that the underlying cause of their troubles may be an accumulation of excess acids and poisons, which should be removed through the bloodstream. They do not realize how much younger, stronger, and better they might feel by helping nature correct this condition. When there was nothing organically or systemically wrong, the medicine called Cystex. C-Y-S-T-E-X usually goes to work right now, helping nature clear away excess acids and poisons through the blood. Stimulating this natural cleansing and purifying action may easily bring you new energy, vitality, and joy in living. So if your sleep is interrupted and you feel nervous, run down, or suffer from rheumatic pains in muscles and joints, why don't you try Cystex? You must discover Cystex to be a quick and easy way to eliminate excess acids through the bloodstream and to gain increased vitality and better and better sleep or your money back is guaranteed on return of the empty package. So get Cystex. C-Y-S-T-E-X from your druggist today and take as directed with a glass of water after each meal. See how much better you feel tomorrow. for a last brief moment with the net. Mm, let's see now. Replacing broken lamp, $35. Repairing scorched woodwork caused by candle igniting jack-o'-lantern, $20. Breaking window, making illegal entry to raid kitchen, bail, $500. Rudy, what are you figuring on? Oh, this bill I got from Andy Potts. It was hard to be honest to charge it against my income tax as Halloween entertainment would have been. Well, you don't call our Halloween party entertainment, do you? Oh, what a fizzle. Well, Fanny, we've got to hand it to the Girl Scouts of America. When Pops locked us out of our own party, those kids took us right in. I had a grand time at their party. The Girl Scouts always come to the rescue in any good cause. Yes, this would be a better country, Fanny, if we grown-ups took as much interest in the Girl Scouts as they took in us. But, Rudy, you shouldn't have tried to give those girls jitterbug lessons. What? Why, they appreciated it, didn't they? They gave me first aid when I jitterbugged my joints all out of place. <laughs> Join us next Sunday, same time, when this next again presents Gene Lockhart and Kathleen Lockhart and Sinead. The show was written by John Elliott and produced by Wally Lamb. The next was created by Saul Ness and supervised for radio by the mayor. This is Tom Dixon saying goodbye for this thing. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Read the NEBS every day in the Los Angeles Examiner. This is KHJ, the Don Lee Station, Los Angeles.